This video may be too much for me. The sun, y'all. What the fuck? Well, damn, Jackie. I can't control the weather. <laughs> Hello shoddy bays, hello besties. I feel like we have not filmed a video in my car in quite some time. Wait, have we? Today we have such a fun video. I am so excited for this one because it involves two of my favorite things, books and TV shows. If you don't know this about me, TV shows are quite literally the love of my life. If I'm not reading, I'm watching a show. I've watched so fucking many. I have so many favorites. I even have a DVD collection of all my favorite shows. Who watches DVDs anymore? No one, including me, but I still have it just because I like to own my favorite things physically. I like to hold them in my hands, you know? I can't hold Netflix. <laughs> anyway, so I picked 10 or so of my favorite shows of all time, and I chose books that remind me of those shows. So if you like these shows, you will like these books. And vice versa, if you like these books, you should watch these shows. Let me know if you like this style, and I can do it with more shows. Like I said, I've watched so many. I have many recommendations. And if you want me to do this with movies, I also am a big movie fanatic. I can do that too. Or music, anything you want, let me know and I'm there. John B, I'm there. Shoddy Bay is just a PSA. These are just books and shows that remind me of each other. It does not mean that they're the exact same thing because they're not. They just give me the same energy. So the first show has to be One Tree Hill because this is my number one show of all time. I've watched it about 17 times. I know it's disturbing. Anyway, let's move on. Let's not find me weird. Let's just move on. I love this show with my entire soul. And of course, I think no one is going to be surprised that the book I picked for this show is the Addicted Calloway Sister series. I just have the last book here with me because I did not want to bring all 10 books to my car. If you want to know anything about this series, I have a whole video about it. So just go watch that. It is just about a family. That's it. We follow their lives. We follow Lily Calloway, Daisy Calloway, Rose Calloway, Connor Cobalt, Lauren Hale, and Reich Meadows. So it is the core six. There's also Garrison and Willow, but they only come in later. That's it. We just follow their lives. And I don't know why, but I am so disgustingly attached to them. <laughs> the reason why I'm saying Addicted Calloway for One Tree Hill without spoiling anything, just the dynamic of the characters remind me a lot of the dynamic of Nathan and Lucas in One Tree Hill. Don't want to spoil anything in Addicted Calloway for you, but just know that the dynamic is kind of the same. And although in One Tree Hill they're not famous and they're not like super rich like they are in these books, I feel like the found family is very much there and you following these people's lives is there. Just overall, I feel like Addicted Calloway gives me the One Tree Hill energy. If you like this show, I can almost guarantee you will love this series. And if you love this series, I will bet my life on the fact that you will love this show. Let me not bet my life on it. In One Tree Hill is basically this small town kind of show. They all live in Tree Hill and they all go to this high school. And you have Nathan, Haley, Brooke, Peyton, Lucas. Um, you also have a lot of amazing, amazing side characters. The show is really, really long. So you go through so much of their lives with them. You go through high school, you go through college, um, you go through adulthood, all of that. And that's what gave me the Addicted Calloway energy because although we don't get to see them in high school, like we get a little bit of flashbacks here and there, but not really. We get to see them in college and then we do get to see them moving on to adulthood and getting jobs and all of that stuff, getting married, having kids, all of that. And One Tree Hill, you do as well. Naley is the best TV couple of all time and Lilo is the best book couple of all time. So I said what I said. Also, Brooke Davis gives me very much Rose Calloway energy. Like they're both such bad bitches. They're both hilarious in a way that they're like not trying to be. They're both gorgeous. They love fashion. Just overall, honestly. Everything about these two remind me of each other. Go watch it. Go read it. I don't want to be anything other than me. Ah! This next show I love with all of my soul. I just rewatched it recently for like the fourth time. It is The O.C. Ah! If you haven't watched The O.C., please. It is incredible. Seth Cohen, unbelievable. You need to watch this. It's set in California. We've been on a run, driving in the sun, looking out for number one. California, here we come. Ah! I have two book wrecks for this show. One is YA and one is not a YA, so you have a little bit of options there, okay? It is a Say You Swear by Megan Brandy and The Semi Turned Pretty by Jenny Han. Um, this is a trilogy and this is a standalone. The reason why these give me very much OC vibes is because they're both like beachy reads and they're both found family reads and that is what the OC stands for, okay? Like they have a lot of drama in the show. It is a very drama filled, okay? But it does have that comfort of like, 
you know, being in the OC and having the beach, the pool, they all go to the same high school. You have this group of people who become family. They're all rich, like beach house. That entire energy is also in these books. Say You Swear is a love triangle, so beware of that, but it is one of the best books ever. And this one is set in college. You have Ariana, Chase, and you have Noah. And their group of friends remind me a lot of the group of friends in the OC, especially because in this book, they have a beach house and they go there often. So you get to see a lot of their summer and bonfires and all that fun stuff. And then with the summer I turned pretty, same kind of vibe. This one is very fun, fluffy, cute. They have a beach house and they go there every summer. And it follows Belly, Conrad, and Jeremiah. Also a love triangle. Oh my god, both the books I picked are love triangles. Ooh. I did not mean to do that. Anyway, the comfort I felt reading this book is very much the comfort I felt watching this show. So I would say that if you like these two books, you really, really need to watch this show. And if you like the show, you really, really need to read these books. In the OC, you have Ryan, Seth, Summer, and Marissa. Ryan moves into the pool house of Seth's big mansion that his parents live in. And Ryan comes from like a really bad background. They take him in. So you get to see them all become friends and Ryan meet everyone. There are so many good tropes in this show, y'all. The drama delivers but it's also so comfortable the oc for sure and i would say the same for these books it has a lot of drama but in a comfortable way also obviously if you like the semi turn pretty books you should watch the semi turn pretty show but that's obvious i'm not gonna tell you that well i just did i'm picking things that are similar to each other but they're not the same <laughs> I made a whole video on the show if you want to go watch it. Oh my god, this is so much fun. I was one of those people that have always obsessed over shows. And then that love kind of went into reading as well. So these are just my two obsessions. It's just fun to talk to you guys about this because I'm usually talking about books. It's fun to also tell you about my favorite shows. So I'm having such a good time. So since I did two drama feel-good shows, I'm going to go for a heavier one, Sons of Anarchy. I've talked about my love for Jax Teller nonstop. So I feel like you guys already know about this show. But basically it follows a motorcycle club and the members of that club in the life they live in Charming. Yeah, the show is not for the weak. Let me just say that because the show is pain. The show is really, really painful and it is very heavy. It is very dark. Be aware of that going into it. It's not a happy show whatsoever, but it is fucking amazing. Phenomenal. You get to see what it's like in that motorcycle club. You get to see what it's like for Jax trying to get out of it. You get to see romance and what it's like to try to have a romance in this kind of situation. Everything about it, I'm obsessed, but it is very, very sad and deep. So be aware. <laughs> I have two books that give me the same energy as Sons of Anarchy, and that is Underlock by Mariana Zapata and Steel King by Devaney Perry. I'm holding Steel King, but specifically the entire Clifton Forge series, really. The Clifton Forge series is Steel King is the first one, then you have Riven Knight, and then you have Stone Princess, Noble Prince, Fallen Jester, and Tin Queen. So those are the six books in the Clifton Forge series. Essentially, it follows a dismantled um, motorcycle club. So you get to see what happened, why the club broke up the way they did, but the members are still all friends and they work in a garage, which is very much the same exact thing that is in Sons of Anarchy. Granted, Sons of Anarchy, you follow the club. They're not dismantled, but they do also work in a garage. It gave me the same vibe. There's even mentions of Sons of Anarchy in Clifton Ford. I love this series so far. I haven't finished it yet. I've only read the first two, but I really, really enjoy these first two. So I'll let you know after I read the next four if I fully recommend, but I can definitely vouch for Steel King and Riven Knight. I really did enjoy both of those. They're all dual POV and it's also set in a small town because we know Devony Perry kills it with the small town. The vibe is very much Sons of Anarchy but make it romance. And then Underlock, same thing as Clifton Forge. It follows a motorcycle club. This one is not dismantled. They're very much still together and the leader of the motorcycle club also owns a tattoo parlor and she starts working at said tattoo parlor. Dex screams Sons of Anarchy. Like Dex would be a character in Sons. 1000% I believe that wholeheartedly. Like his humor, the way he talks, the way he does business, the motorcycle club, the tattoo shop, all of it would be something that would belong in Sons of Anarchy for sure. But yeah, definitely Clifton Forge and Underlock if you like Sons of Anarchy. Also, I'm sure Fallen Men as well by Gianna Darling. I have those books, but I have not read them yet. So I can't tell you if they're good or not. But I do know that that also follows a motorcycle club. So if you want another kind of wreck like that, Fallen Men. Riding through this world all alone. The Crow Fly Stray! Shoddy Bays, I am here to interrupt your regularly scheduled program to talk to you guys about a book. The book in question is Pignon Scorpion and the Barbershop Detectives by Rick Blaywes. I hope I said all of that right. Y'all know how I am with pronunciation of things. English isn't my first language. <laughs> 
Thank you so much to Blackstone Publishing for sponsoring this video. Mwah! This book is set in 1910 England in guess what? A small town. We all know how I feel about small towns. This book follows the detective who comes into the small town and immediately three crimes occur. He has to solve them. And he has a team behind them. The team that is um, in the barbershop. Barbershop detectives there, I say it. Small town, mystery, a little bit of romance, friendships, do I need any more? This universe exists in the same universe as Sherlock Holmes and John Watson because Pinyon knows Watson. Excuse me? I love solving crimes. In my spare time, I do so with criminal minds all the time and I do so with Pinyon. So Shadi Bays, if you are looking for something that's comfy and thrilling all at the same time, then Pinyon Scorpion and the Barbershop Detectives is the book for you. Link in description for you to go buy it. Dun -dun -dun -dun. We did something really dark, right? So let's go back to something light. In fact, let's do comedy. New Girl, the best comedy of all time. New Girl and Brooklyn Nine-Nine, that's it. Also Ted Lasso, Rick and Morty, of course. <sighs> what was I saying? So for New Girl, I have a very interesting rec for this. It's Faking with Benefits by Lily Gold. <laughs> Be warned, this is a reverse harem, which means it's one girl with three guys. So that is the concept of this book. The one girl is like inexperienced in dating and she's very quirky and fun. But at the same time, she is really responsible and loves her job and works hard and all of that. And her neighbors are three best friends. It is Luke, Zach, and Josh. They all live next door to her. They're best friends with her. They decide that they're going to help her on how to date and they're all gonna do like a dating experiment with her. This is very much a rom-com. It is so, so funny and all the guys are so different just like in New Girl and there's only one girl in the scenario. They're all best friends. And New Girl, if you haven't watched it, you fucking have to. It is hilarious. Nick Miller, Nick Miller from the streets of Chicago. It is basically this group of friends. Jess starts living with these three guys that she met on the internet. Is it the safest thing to do? No, but they told her that they wouldn't murder her. So obviously, you know, who is she not to believe them? <laughs> So this one is such a good comedy. It is such a feel-good show. It is one of those that you can watch over and over again. And the more you watch, the funnier it gets. When you're in the mood to laugh, when you're in the mood to just like forget all your problems, New Girl is definitely the show for that. And then when you're in the mood for New Girl but spicy, Faking with Benefits by Lily Gold. <laughs> <laughs> for a little bit of fantasy retelling kind of vibe, Once Upon a Time, this is a show about fairy tales coming to life. It is basically fairy tales that were cursed to live in a real human world. So like you have Snow White and Prince Charming and they're all living regular lives without their happy ending. And then someone comes into town and she changes everything about said curse. I love this show so much. It is a very much a comfort show. We don't talk about that last season. It didn't happen. I didn't see it, so it didn't happen. Just like the 100. We don't talk about the ending for the 100. We do not talk about what they did to Bellamy and Clark. So fairy tales come to life, bunch of retellings. One of my favorite ships is in this show. It's Captain Swan. I think no one is gonna be surprised that I pull out the Never After series because obviously it makes sense, right? So you have Hooked, Scarred, and Wretched and the Never After series is by Emily McIntyre. She writes retellings kind of, but it's basically villains getting their happy endings. I have such a soft spot for this series. I I'm not sure why the endings are very rushed so they're not like the fucking best written things ever but I had such a good time reading them and it reminded me a lot of Once Upon a Time. I specifically picked up Hooked because of Killian Jones in Once Upon a Time. I was picturing him the entire time I read this. If you like retellings, if you like villains, if you like Spice, Never After series for sure and if you like just comfort fantasy you would love once upon a time it is just so good and sebastian stan is the mad hatter do you need any more i don't think you do and the never after series are very much dark romances so search up trigger warnings if you need them next we have pretty little liars this show is so popular i'm sure all of you know it i watched it like twice a long long time ago so i don't really remember a lot about this show i need to rewatch soon i'm planning on it but when i read ivy by will and ash it gave me this energy even the cover like look at the cover of this it says whisper your confessions in our ear we promise not to tell and it has a little like shh Got a secret, can you keep it? Ivy basically follows three friends and they're all roommates and you get all three storylines and all different point of views and stuff like that. So you have a lot of tropes in this because of the three different love stories. And the reason why it reminds me so much of Pale Liars is because Ivy is very much like Alison Gillarantes. She's the leader of the group. She tests her friends. She's a little bit on like the evil side, but not fully there. And they all have different personalities, different love stories, all of that, the different secrets that everybody keeps very much put a little 
fire's energy. This book does have a little bit of dark elements to it, so search up trigger warnings if you need that. Now I have two shows that together make this book. It is Dexter and Criminal Minds, and if you combine those two, you get the Mindfuck series by S.T. Abbey. I've talked about how much I love the Mindfuck series so many times, but it is basically a serial killer with an FBI agent, and the serial killer is the girl, Lana Myers, and the FBI agent is the guy, Logan Bennett. I think it's pretty obvious why I picked this series for these shows, but um, Dexter is about a serial killer, but he only kills really, really bad, fucked up people. Yeah. And then Criminal Minds, on the other hand, is a show about FBI agents. It's the complete opposite of this because they are profilers in the BAU and they solve cases. The Mindfuck series is exactly that because Lana is a serial killer and Logan is the FBI agent trying to catch her. So you put Dexter with Criminal Minds and you get the Mindfuck series. Everybody should read this series. Lana and Logan can do no wrong. Search up trigger warnings. It is very heavy. It is very dark, but it is incredible. Um, and if you haven't watched Criminal Minds, what the fuck are you doing? I'm rewatching it right now and I'm obsessed all over again. There are 15 seasons indeed, but it is worth every second. I've showed you guys before, but let me show you again. Look at the background on my phone. It's Spencer Reed, AKA the love of my life. Also, let's not talk about how dirty my phone is. <laughs> Next show and book I have for you is Shameless and Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Listen, obviously this is set in Malibu and the siblings are very, very rich. However, the family aspect of it and specifically one character remind me a lot of Shameless. This book follows the Riva siblings and they throw a party one night and at the end of the party the house is on fire and you get to see the entire party. So it's basically done in like a 24 hour span kind of thing but you get to know the character so much because it does go from the past and the present. Now the reason why I'm comparing this to Shameless is because Nina, the oldest sibling, gives me so much Fiona Gallagher energy. Like she would do anything to protect her family and she's so strong. She's the head of the family. She is there when the parents can't be. She is there when the dad is a piece of shit. And that is exactly what Shameless is. It's Fiona carrying the family on her back. This is what Nina does and Malibu Rising as well. So that's really the only reason why I'm comparing these so much is because of the female leads. Because Shameless obviously is way, way darker than Malibu Rising. It shows such real topics and I think that's why I love this show so much is because it's one of the only shows I've ever seen that shows the most real things that people go through. They don't shy away from anything. They show poverty in America. They show what it's like to have an alcoholic dad. They show drug abuse, teen pregnancy. Everything is in here and they're not shy about it. Like I said, they really, really want to show you. And I love that because those things exist and people need to fucking see it, you know? So Shameless, Malibu Rising, um, Nina, and Fiona. If you love Fiona, you will love Nina. Now getting back on our comedy kick once again, we've got Shit's Creek. And of course for Shit's Creek, I have to put It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey because this book is inspired by this show. So of course they're alike. This book is a small town romance. It's about Piper and Brandon. And Piper is this it girl and she moves to this small town named Westport and meets Brandon who is a fisherman there. Very much grumpy sunshine, small town. It is hilarious. And Piper is exactly Alexis. She is based on Alexis from Shit's Creek. So obviously that makes sense. Shit's Creek is hilarious. It's one of those shows that you have to watch probably by yourself and really pay attention because the comedy is not in your face comedy. It's one of those things that you have to be following the show and you have to be paying attention to it for you to find it funny. And It Happened One Summer is just as good and funny and so much romance. I love Brandon and Piper so much. There's also a second one called Hook, Line, and Sinker. I like that one even more, but It Happened One Summer is definitely Shit's Creek reincarnated. Fold the cheese. We didn't know where you were. Your phone was off. A little bit of Lexus. <laughs> Now this show, you guys, I just finished rewatching it before Criminal Minds. And if you want to feel comfortable, if you want to feel happy, if you want to just have a feel good show, Heart of Dixie. Heart of Dixie. I love this show so much. Very underrated. These books give me the same energy. I have Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score and Beauty and the Baller by Isla Madden Mills. Um, both of these books are very much like Heart of Dixie. Heart of Dixie is set in small town, Bluebell, Alabama. And basically you have this big city doctor who moves to that small town to practice medicine. And obviously it's a small town so everybody knows about each other. You get to see everybody's storyline. The songs are superior. I love country music. I know a lot of people don't, but I am a big fan. So the songs for me really killed it. And I love Wade Kinsella. And Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score is also a small town romance. It's Naomi and Knox. It gives me that same feeling because Naomi comes from a big city and she starts living in this town that she has no idea about. And someone starts helping her out, Knox. And you have that kind of same energy on Heart of Dixie. And also, you know, he's the bartender. Same thing as Wade. You have everybody knowing about each other because it's a small town. You have that comfy feeling here 
It's also super funny, just like Heart of Dixie is. Overall, this is very much for the Heart of Dixie fans. This is for the small town fans. Grumpy Sunshine, Slow Burn, every aspect of this book is amazing. I love it so much. Nox and Naomi give me very much Wade and Zoe energy because she like babbles a lot. She's really smart. She's really funny. And he's very much on the grumpier side and he doesn't want to like date. He just wants to fuck around with everyone. And that's like Wade. Beauty and the Baller, on the other hand, follows Nova and Ronan and they've met before, but he doesn't remember her. And now she moves to the small town where he is at because she comes to take care of her sister. The reason why I'm putting this one here is because they are exactly like Levon and Lemon. If you watch Heart of Dixie and you ship Levon and Lemon like I do, you would love Beauty and the Baller because they're the same kind of vibe. Like Levon is a retired football player and now he's in the small town doing a lot for the small town. Same thing as Ronan here. And then you have Lemon who is the Southern Belle, who is sophisticated, funny, a little bit spicy, same as Nova. I don't want easy, I want crazy. The last book and show I will be talking about today is one that I am currently reading. It is just giving me the energy already. It is Magnolia Parks and Magnolia Parks reminds me a lot of, drum roll please, Gossip Girl. It is literally Gossip Girl, but make it London. It is a series. This is just the first one and it's not finished yet, Um, but it is basically high society London. It is this group of people who are all like intertwined. They have known each other since they were kids. There's a lot of romance, a lot of found family, and they're very rich. They're very toxic. They're all over the place. There is cheating. There's a lot of morally gray things in this book. And that is exactly why it reminds me of Gossip Girl because Gossip Girl, they're a whole ass mess. I love this group of people, okay? I love Chuck and Blair so much. But tell me they're not toxic. You can't. You can't tell me they're not. <laughs> but I love them. Don't get me wrong. And that is the same as Magnolia and BJ. And all the characters in this book pretty much remind me a lot of Gossip Girl. Just the same energy. Search of trigger warnings. If you like GG, you probably like MP. <laughs> See what I did there? It was bad. You don't have to laugh. It's okay. Gossip Girl, I don't even need to talk about it. Y'all know what Gossip Girl is. It is basically a bunch of rich kids living in New York. <laughs> That's it. And it's a great fucking time. We love to see it. Anyway, Shotty Bays, those are all the books and shows I have for you today. Let me know if you want to see a part two of this. I have so many more favorite shows. Let me know if you have any other shows you want to see book recs for, or um, if you want to see movies or music. Let me know any ideas. And if you tell me you don't like it, I may or may not cry, but like it's fine. You know what I mean? It will hurt my feelings, but I just won't show you. I'll cry privately, as I should. <laughs> I love you. I love you. I love you.